Regarding of transactions 1, Generalizing solutions, Problem 11 solution, Presented by Edxit.com. In this video, we are going to provide Regarding of transactions 1, Generalizing solutions, Problem 11 solution. The problem statement is as follows. Generalize the following transactions in the books of Himanshu. On 1st December, business started with cash 75,000 rupees. On 7th December, purchased goods for cash. 10,000 rupees. On 9th December, sold goods to Swati. 5,000 rupees. On 12th December, purchased furniture. 3,000 rupees. On 18th December, Cash received from Swati in full settlement. 4000 rupees. On 25th December, paid rent. 1000 rupees. On 30th December, paid salary. 1500 rupees. Before we proceed with the generalizing of these transactions, let us first recap the rules used for generalizing the transactions. In case of assets or expenses or losses, any increase in any of these should be debited and any decrease should be credited. Whereas in case of liabilities or capital or revenues or gains, Any increase in any of these should be credited and any decrease should be debited. With these rules at our hand, let us proceed with the analysis of these transactions one by one. In the first transaction, the business is started with a cash of 75,000 rupees. So in this transaction, the cash asset is introduced into the business. In other words, the cash asset of the business is increasing in this transaction. The rule to record any increase in the asset is to debit the corresponding assets account. In this case, the cash account should be debited. Also, as the owner is bringing a cash of 75,000 rupees into the business, it is increasing the owner's equity or capital. The rule to record an increase in the capital is to credit the capital account. With this analysis at our disposal, let us proceed with the generalizing of this transaction. Let us record the title as Books of Himanshu Journal. Let us have individual columns for date, particulars, ledger folio, debit amount in rupees, and credit amount in rupees. Let us first record the date. Let us now record the cash account as the debit entry. Let us then record the text DR to indicate that this is a debit entry. Let us also record the debit amount of 75,000 rupees into the debit amount column. Leaving a margin, let us now record the credit entry. As you know, the credit entry start with 2. Let us now record the capital account as the credit entry. Let us also record the credit amount of 75,000 rupees into the credit amount column. Let us then write the narration or description of this transaction. That is, being business started with cash. Let us now draw a line to mark the completion of generalizing of this transaction. That completes the generalizing of this transaction. Let us now take up the next transaction. 
In this transaction, goods worth of ten thousand rupees are purchased. Now, the purchase of goods falls under revenue expenses. In other words, the business is incurring an expense in this case. The rule to record an expense incurred is to debit the corresponding expenses account. In this case, the purchases account should be debited. At the same time, as these purchases are done by paying in cash, the cash asset of the business will be decreasing. The rule to record any decrease in the asset is to credit the corresponding assets account. In this case, the cash account should be credited. With this analysis at our disposal, let us proceed with the generalizing of this transaction. Let us first record the date. Let us then record the purchases account as the debit entry. Let us also write the text DR to indicate that this is a debit entry. Let us also write the debit amount of ten thousand rupees into the debit amount column. Leaving a margin, let us now record the cash account as the credit entry. Let us also write the credit amount of ten thousand rupees into the credit amount column. Let us now write the narration or description of this transaction. That is, being goods purchased for cash. Let us now draw a line to mark the completion of generalizing of this transaction. That completes the generalizing of this transaction. Let us now take up the next transaction. In this transaction, goods worth of five thousand rupees are sold to Swati. Note that as the buyer to whom the goods are sold is specified as Swati, this is a credit transaction. In other words, the goods are sold to Swati on credit. So Swati is a debtor of the business. Now sales generate revenue for the business. The rule to record any revenue generated is to credit the corresponding revenues account. In this case, the sales account should be credited. At the same time, as these sales are done on credit to Swati, Swati becomes the debtor of the business. In other words, the debtor asset of the business is increasing in this transaction. The rule to record any increase in the asset is to debit the corresponding assets account. In this case, the debtor Swati's account should be debited. With this analysis at our disposal, let us proceed with the generalizing of this transaction. Let us first record the date. Let us then record Swati account as the debit entry. Let us also write the text DR to indicate that this is a debit entry. Let us also write the debit amount of five thousand rupees in the debit amount column, leaving a margin. Let us record the sales account as the credit entry. Let us also write the credit amount of five thousand rupees into the credit amount column. Let us now write the narration or description of this transaction. That is, being goods sold to Swati. Let us now draw a line to mark the completion of generalizing of this transaction. That completes the generalizing of this transaction. Let us now take up the next transaction. In this transaction, the business has purchased furniture worth of three thousand rupees. Note that as the supplier from whom the furniture is purchased is not provided, we can safely assume that the furniture is purchased for cash. Now, the furniture is capital expenditure, which is asset of the business. In other words, the asset of the business is increasing in this transaction. The rule to record any increase in the asset is to debit the corresponding assets account. In this case, the furniture account should be debited. At the same time, as the furniture is purchased by paying in cash, the cash asset of the business will be decreasing. The rule to record any decrease in the asset is to credit the corresponding assets account. In this case, the cash account should be credited. With this analysis at our disposal. Let us proceed with the generalizing of this transaction. Let us first record the date. Let us now record the furniture account as the debit entry. Let us also write the text DR to indicate that this is a debit entry. Let us also write the debit amount of three thousand rupees in the debit amount column. Leaving a margin, let us record the cash account as the credit entry. Let us also write the credit amount of three thousand rupees in the credit amount column. Let us now write the narration or description of this transaction. That is, being furniture purchased. 
let us now draw a line to mark the completion of generalizing of this transaction that completes the generalizing of this transaction let us now take up the next transaction in this transaction the business has received 4000 rupees of cash in full settlement note that this transaction is related to the transaction done on 9th december wherein the business has sold goods worth of 5000 rupees to swati swati is now returning 4000 rupees from those 5000 rupees she owed to the business also note that it is specified that this payment is done for full settlement from 5000 rupees if you subtract 4000 rupees we get 1000 rupees this is the discount allowed to swati so after providing the discount to swati all her dues are cleared so in this transaction all the debit owed by swati to the business is cleared in other words the debtor asset of the business is decreasing in this transaction the rule to record any decrease in the asset is to create the corresponding assets account in this case the debtor swati account should be created at the same time as the debtor is paying a cash of 4000 rupees the cash asset of the business is increasing the rule to record any increase in the asset is to debit the corresponding assets account in this case the cash account should be debited at the same time the business is providing 1000 rupees of discount to swati as you know the discount allowed is an expense for the business in other words the business is incurring an expense named discount allowed in this transaction the rule to record any expense incurred is to debit the corresponding expenses account in this case the discount allowed account should be debited with this analysis at our disposal let us proceed with the generalizing of this transaction let us first record the date let us then record cash account as the debit entry let us also write the text dr to indicate that this is a debit entry let us also record the debit amount of 4000 rupees in the debit amount column let us then write the other debit entry named discount allowed let us also write the text dr to indicate that this is a debit entry let us also record the debit amount of 1000 rupees in the debit amount column leaving a margin let us record swati account as the credit entry let us also record the credit amount of 5000 rupees in the credit amount column let us now record the narration or description of this transaction that is being cash received from swati in full settlement let us now draw a line to mark the completion of generalizing of this transaction that completes the generalizing of this transaction let us now take up the next transaction in this transaction the business has paid a rent of 1000 rupees unless otherwise specified all the payments are usually considered to be done in cash so we can consider this transaction as rent paid in cash now rent is an expense in other words the business is incurring an expense named rent in this transaction the rule to record an expense incurred is to debit the corresponding expenses account in this case the rent account should be debited at the same time as the payment of the rent is done in cash the cash asset of the business will be decreasing the rule to record any decrease in the asset is to create the corresponding assets account in this case the cash account should be created with this analysis at our disposal let us proceed with the generalizing of this transaction let us first record the date let us then record the rent account as the debit entry let us also write the text dr to indicate that this is a debit entry let us also write the debit amount of 1000 rupees into the debit amount column leaving a margin let us now record the cash account as the credit entry let us also record the credit amount of 1000 rupees into the credit amount column let us now record the narration or description of this transaction that is being rent paid let us now draw a line to mark the completion of generalizing of this transaction that completes the generalizing of this transaction let us now take up the next transaction in this transaction the business has paid a salary of 1500 rupees unless otherwise specified 
all the payments are usually considered to be done in cash. So we can consider this transaction as salary paid in cash. Now salary is an expense. In other words, the business is incurring an expense named salary in this transaction. The rule to record an expense incurred is to debit the corresponding expenses account. In this case, the salary account should be debited. At the same time, as the payment of the salary is done in cash, the cash asset of the business will be decreasing. The rule to record any decrease in the asset is to create the corresponding assets account. In this case, the cash account should be credited. With this analysis at our disposal, let us proceed with the generalizing of this transaction. Let us first record the date. Let us then record the salary account as the debit entry. Let us also write the text DR to indicate that this is a debit entry. Let us also write the debit amount of 1500 rupees into the debit amount column. Leaving a margin, let us now record the cash account as the credit entry. Let us also record the credit amount of 1500 rupees into the credit amount column. Let us now record the narration or description of this transaction, that is, being salary paid. Let us now draw a line to mark the completion of generalizing of this transaction. With that, we have completed the generalizing of this transaction. In fact, we have completed the generalizing of all the transactions. The total of all the amounts in the debit amounts column is 1,500 rupees. Similarly, the total of all the amounts in the credit amounts column is 1,500 rupees. Thanks for watching. Edixit.com is started to promote effective and efficient learning process to help the students with their learning requirements. To watch all our videos, please subscribe to our channel. Also, please click on the bell icon to receive a notification as soon as a new video is published. Please click on the like button if you like this video. Thanks for watching.